Hello, thank you for joining us here online. I'm Karen and with my husband Paul, we're the team leaders here at Freedom Church and it's my pleasure to welcome you. Some of you we will know personally who are with us online, but for those of you whom we have never met, we pray that you have a real sense that you belong with us as well. Today we have Josh from New Jersey, USA, speaking to us in the series of Women in the Bible. But first, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that we can come into your presence through Jesus. We are here to worship you, Jesus, and we are ready to hear you speak to us. We come before you humbly with open hearts. We ask that you impart your truth to us in the power of your Holy Spirit. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come. Come and be right here with us now. In Jesus' name, Amen. As Josh is speaking to us from the book of Ruth, our Bible reading is taken from that book in two parts. The first is the opening lines from Ruth 1, 1 to 5, and it says this. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi and the names of his two sons were Marlon and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judea. They went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpha and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both Marlon and Kilian also died. Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. The second reading is Ruth 4, verses 13 to 17. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. When he made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth. Then Naomi took the child in her arms and cared for him. The women living there said, Naomi has a son. And they named him Obed. He was the father of Jess, the father of David. Now let's worship Jesus through song.
Before we listen to Josh, let me spend a moment on prayer. Prayer is vital for the life of the church. And throughout Lent, we are focusing our prayer specifically on Ukraine. We hold prayer over Zoom and have people join us from all over England. And we've also been honoured to have some join us from Ukraine. It's absolutely vital that we pray to our powerful God for his will and his righteousness to stand and overcome evil. There are so many stories in the Old Testament where huge, powerful, oppressive armies were defeated when God's people cried out to him. Evil will be defeated if we fall to our knees in prayer. We wholeheartedly believe our God hears and answers prayer and you are welcome to join. We pray at different times on four days in the week and the link can be found in our YouTube bio. But now it's time to, for us to hear what God is saying to us through Josh. Drawing from the book of Ruth, Josh draws out five truths for us all. Good morning, Freedom Church. In God's characteristic loving kindness, he's been working on me and continuing to soften my heart. But over the last two years, I've noticed something special about the book of Ruth that creates a kind of emotional effect that I've been trying to put my finger on. As some of you know, I typically read the Bible over a year, but I listen to it. And it helps me um, have a better alignment, I think, and balance instead of gravitating to those favorite passages and well-worn chapters and verses that I love. Um, I Listening to the Bible is a different experience than simply reading it on the page, which I think also has a great value too. But it, it allows us to be able to experience it differently and not get bogged down with um, for me, cross-references and editorial notes and, and those sorts of things. So, And it also helps me understand why the public reading of Scripture has so much value and power. Um, but I've known this story. What's, what's odd is I've known it all my life. It's, it's a classic. It's a Sunday school lesson. I probably first saw it, honestly, on a flannel graph with little felt figures on a board. Um, and... It's that this is why it's it surprises me that in the last couple of years um, the Lord has kind of put His finger on this. So uh, let's let's dig in a little bit to this story of Ruth. It's it's an unusual and well crafted, balanced narrative, uh, a close up domestic one in the context of the swirling and violent dark Book of Judges, which it follows. It's a breakout from Judges, actually. Um, and that book follows Israel's turbulent beginnings where everyone did what was right in his own eyes before the nation had a king. Ruth, the book of Ruth, has no battles, but it is concerned with a family from the backwoods village of Bethlehem. But there's more here than just an interesting story. Um, and I trust you know it. So I have five observations that I'd like to point out from this book of Ruth. And I'm focusing on primarily the passages that really um, touched me as I listened to the story over the last few years. First, have devotion against all odds. We see in Ruth love and loyalty towards Naomi at first and then towards the Lord. But God, or but 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 Ruth replied to Naomi, "Don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God." So this is in that context where Naomi is getting ready to go back to Bethlehem, and Ruth, um, Ruth, uh, Ruth tells Naomi. I will, I will stay with you where you go. I will go where you stay. I will stay. Your people will be my people, your God, my God. Even though Naomi has said, go back to your people, go back, find yourself a husband. We also see this devotion, rewards about this devotion 
um, against all odds in Boaz's reply to um, Ruth's request for, rede for redemption. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. All the people of my town know that, know that you are a woman of noble character. Ruth was known um, very quickly as a virtuous woman. Proverbs speaks of a woman of noble character being her husband's crown and her worth being far more than rubies. So the first point is have devotion against all odds. We see that in the character of Ruth. Second, God is near to the humble. And the Moabites, where Ruth is from, were one of the most mistrusted and despised enemies of Israel. This nation was started from the offspring of Lot and one of his daughters after the destruction of Sodom. According to Deuteronomy, no Moabite or the descendants to the 10th generation were allowed to enter the assembly of the Lord. So we see her position um, in relationship to uh, Hebrew law. Ruth was definitely a humble foreigner in, in uh, the, the, the village of Bethlehem where she returned. But despite that fact, some Jewish scholars, interestingly, believe that she may have even been a princess, um, the daughter of the Moabite king Eglon, who oppressed Israel. All, that would also make her the granddaughter of uh, Balak, who tried to hire Balaam to curse Israel. But that's kind of a side note. Look at how she talks to Boaz when he offers her drinks when she is thirsty and tells her that the men, um, that his men, rather, have been instructed not to touch her. This is how Ruth replies. May I continue to find favor in your eyes, my Lord, she said. You have put me at ease by speaking kindly to your servant, though I do not have the standing of one of your servants. And this, this phrasing kind of reminds me of the prodigal son as he rehearse, rehearses his speech to his father, um, leaving the pigsty. He, he comes to the realization that he is no longer worthy to be called um, his father's son and, and, you know, make me like one of your hired servants. So in this story, the gracious father interrupts the son before he finishes his speech and gives new clothes, a ring, and sandals um, to his son. He has a feast. And Boaz, similarly, he's, he's really a picture of Christ, invites Ruth into a time of communion. Ruth, this, this humble outsider, is invited by, by Boaz um, to a meal. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, come over here. And, and, and remember, she's gleaning in the fields. This is what the poor um, do to get their, get their food. Come over here, have some bread and dip it in the wine. And when she sat down with the harvesters, he offered her some roasted grain. She ate all that she wanted and had some left over. This is a kind of invitation to communion. And look at the refrain the Levites were instructed to recite in a loud voice when they crossed the Jordan. Cursed is anyone who withholds justice from the foreigner, the fatherless or the widow. Then all the people shall say, Amen. That comes from Deuteronomy 27 verse 19. This is so relevant today as we see refugees of war, children who have lost parents, wives who have lost husbands. Scripture is so clear about this. God's heart is for the poor, the vulnerable, as Sarah spoke about, um, the oppressed, and he will hide them under his wings. He delights in showing mercy, and the prophets rebuked Israel when they neglected um, to do so. Listen to the words of Isaiah here. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead for the widow. So we have Ruth here who is both uh, a widow and also someone um, who was a foreigner. God is near to the humble and is especially concerned for the oppressed, the fatherless, and the widow. We need, to do, we need to share this concern by defending, taking up the cause, and pleading for the cases of the vulnerable. 
Third, God instructs his workers to watch out for the vulnerable. Boaz not only tells his men not to touch Ruth, as we mentioned before, but he also instructs them to take extra grain from the sheaves, I love this part, and drop them on purpose. As Ruth got up to glean after eating um, with Boaz in chapter two, Boaz gave these orders to his men. Let her gather among the sheaves and don't reprimand her. Even pull out some stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up and don't rebuke her. Likewise, I found that whenever I'm in a situation that I can't get out of, God tells his people and they step in where I can't. As you know, I have five children and we've been blessed by cribs, mattresses, food, you name it. And this is important. This, this uh, point about God instructing his workers to watch out for the vulnerable is an important realization on both ends. There's a time to receive and there's a time to give. What's key is that you listen to the Lord. Lately, for example, um, we've been spring cleaning and um, instead of selling stuff on eBay, um, we've been giving it to our neighborhood. That We live in a depressed area and we been, have just been taking things that we realize that we don't need and putting them out front of the house and our, uh, people drive by and they're so grateful for the things that we're putting out there. I declare to my children every day on their way to school, you are blessed and bring blessing wherever you go. The characteristics I want to model um, are that in lean and fruitful times, well, uh, I, I want to model in lean and fruitful times would be gratefulness when receiving, I'm sorry, and generosity when giving. The point is the vulnerable get God's attention and should also have our attention. Next, it was God's heart to redeem Gentiles. And we see this through Ruth, Boaz, and then also Rahab, another um, famous woman in the Bible. Boaz said to Ruth, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with the people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. That's from Ruth 2, 11 and 12. Favor was coming from Boaz. He was the right person in leadership to notice her. A daughter of Rahab, Boaz was. Um, you'll see in Matthew, in the genealogy mentioned in Matthew 1, verse 5, Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. And if you remember, Rahab was a prostitute in Jericho who, ha who hid spies when they were sent by Joshua. She knew her city was doomed when the people of Israel were coming, so she appealed to the spies. This is what Rahab said, who would be um, Boaz's relative. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and you will save us from death. This is Joshua 2.12. The spies kept their promise, and she went with them into the promised land. Rahab was an outsider, Ruth was an outsider, yet their names are listed in Jesus's genealogy. God redeemed them as a prophetic sign, and through their line, God redeemed the world. God's heart is not only to redeem Israel, but also outsiders. And I know a little bit of what it is like to be an outsider. Um, I, when I studied in the UK and, and met the cars, um, I remember speaking a different dialect, being in a different country, driving on the opposite side of the road, um, learning new, new ways, and uh, 
it was it was definitely a tricky time, but I, I am so grateful for the kindness, the undeserved kindness that the that the car showed us. Um, when my wife and I were newly married. And I remember uh, specifically a Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, they got they invited us over on a Thursday to have turkey and and pumpkin pie, which Karen made. And this was really unrewarded. There was no benefit for them. And yet we see God's heart is for those on the outside. Um, and being God's people means that we share his heart. And we also see that it was God's heart to redeem Gentiles like Ruth and like, um, and like Rahab. Finally, fruitfulness and blessing come from God. Ruth comes under God's protection through Boaz. He offers her a blessing that she would be richly rewarded by the God of Israel under whose wings she has come to take refuge. We mentioned this verse before. It's chapter 2, verse 12. But at the threshing floor, Ruth tells Boaz, spread the corner of your garment over me since, since you are my redeemer. The same Hebrew word, wings or corner, is used in um, both these circumstances where Boaz talks about Ruth being under God's protection, under his wings, and the corner of the garment. In the Gospel of Matthew, um, there's an account of the woman who touched the hem of Jesus' garment for healing. This is something that Sarah talked about um, recently. A woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up and touched the edge of his cloak. Healing comes from even the corners or the edges. We have Boaz, a descendant of a Canaanite prostitute, and Ruth, a cursed Moabite, entering into God's blessing together, one helping the other. Ruth's first husband was Malan, which means ill, worn out, sickly, afflicted, wounded. She had no offspring from that marriage, but when she married Boaz, and this is where the fruitfulness comes in, and Boaz's name means strength, she has a child. Here's the account. So Boaz and Ruth married, and they became one as husband and wife. Yahweh opened Ruth's womb, and she bore a son. That comes from Ruth 4, 13. Their son's name was Obed, which could be a shortened version of Obadiah. It also means worshiper. And um, Obed was the grandfather of Israel's most, most beloved, King David. Later, when David is wrongfully pursued by Saul, he sends his parents to Moab for safety. And here's that account in 1 Samuel 22, 3-4. David went to Mizpah in Moab and said to the king of Moab, Would you let my father and mother come stay with you? until I learn what God will do for me. So he left them with the king of Moab and they stayed with him as long as David was in the stronghold. Listen, God protects, heals, and blesses us despite impossible situations. Fruitfulness and blessing come from God. So let's summarize these points. There were five of them that we learn from the character and book of Ruth. First, be devoted against all odds. Second, be humble. Third, watch out for the vulnerable. Love what God loves. And finally, receive the fruit and blessing that comes from him, even in impossible situations. I'll end with a few lines of poetry from Ruth's great-grandson, David when he was in trouble and was fleeing for his life. They come from Psalm 57. Have mercy on me, my God. Have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. I cry out to God my Most High, to God who vindicates me. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me, 
God sends forth his love and faithfulness. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples, for great is your love reaching the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the, na- above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Amen. Thank you so much, Josh, for that insight. Let's turn that into prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the beautiful truths that are revealed in the book of Ruth. Lord, may we be devoted to you and your people against all odds. May we be humble. May you impart your heart to us for the vulnerable so that we care enough to act. May we love what you love. May we have the grace and wisdom to receive the fruit and blessing that comes from you, especially in impossible situations. And Lord, please fill us with your Holy Spirit to empower us and make this possible. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This dry and desert land I tell myself keep walking on Here's something up ahead Water falling like a song An everlasting stream Your river carries me home Let it flow, let it flow Never will run dry I've rambled on my own Never believing I would find An everlasting stream Your river carries me home Let it flow, let it flow Oh, burn the heavens Come Living waters on my fountains are in you. You're strong like a river. Your love is running through all my fountains are in you.
You're strong like a river Your love is running through all my fountains A heart in you And now for the closing blessing. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. May God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us here at Freedom Church on our YouTube channel. Our prayer is that you're encouraged and strengthened today. We'd love to connect with you our online family. You can contact us using the link in today's description if you'd like that too. May God bless you and goodbye.